Good afternoon and evening, everyone, and welcome to week one of Digital Literacy. My name is Justin Hardy, and tonight I'm going to be working with you and in introducing you to the Los Angeles Film School and the Digital Literacy course uh, more specifically. And this is our class overview for what we're going to cover this evening. We're going to talk about first week prep, just getting some of those housekeeping odds and ends out of the way so that you know how to access your email, you know what the late policy is, you know where to look for the due dates for your activities. You've seen the class page. There's some things I'm going to show you there as well. I'm also going to show you guys how to navigate the LMS, which is the class page itself. So where to find your assignments, where to turn things in, where to look for rubrics and all of that. We're also going to talk about the student portal and some of the resources that are available on the home website that you guys are going to access because you're going to need it um, in the future. And then we're also going to talk about week one module and the activities for this week that are graded. Okay, so without further ado, my name is again, Justin Hardy. So if you're working with me this month, like Merrill, um, you can reach out to me via phone or email. I will answer my phone or email fairly quickly, but if it's later on in the evening, like it is on the East Coast here, I may wait until the next day. But if you contact me during the day, just send out a text or an email, I will get back to you within a couple of minutes or maybe an hour or two. So I'm pretty quickly, pretty quick on the response times, but if it's in the evening, you may get a response from me the very next day. So without further ado, welcome to the Los Angeles Film School, each and every one of you. Um, I can't speak to the specifics for why you all are here, but there's gonna be a common thread that you'll see in the following weeks once you get a little bit more acclimated to my instruction style, if you're working with me, once you do a few of the discussion posts and get to know your classmates, you're going to see some common threads between yourselves and your teachers in terms of how you guys all came together to celebrate your education here at the Los Angeles Film School and to become professionals in your chosen discipline, right? So one thing that separates LA Film School from a more traditional school is that we have an accelerated program. So instead of your semesters being four to six months long, like you would see at a more traditional college or community college, the semesters here are, um, how do I say, a month or two months long. So four weeks to eight weeks. So in your first couple of classes, your semester is gonna be four weeks long where we cover one major subject for the week, same for your second month. And in your third month, that's when things change up. You'll actually be engaged in your core uh, discipline classes where you'll be learning Pro Tools, um, Photoshop, uh, Final Cut Pro, all of those things. That's when your classes will become more involved. So halfway through your degree program, you're gonna see those two a month long, eight week semester classes where you're doing involved things where you turn in one part of a project, you get graded for it and based on your feedback, you build out the next part and improve the first part because your instructor is looking for you to incorporate feedback into your production process, just like you would do in the entertainment industry. So things will get a little bit more serious, but these first four weeks are to get you guys acclimated so that you are completely prepared for month two and month two is going to prepare you for month three and then month three is going to prepare you for how the rest of your discipline is going to go for your degree program so without further ado let's go ahead and get into the schedule for zooms now you guys want to see four different class schedules here this does not mean that you have to attend all four of them you pick and choose the schedule or the class schedule that works best for you so Lisa and Stacy are the 12 p.m. So this is going to be all in Eastern time. So you might have to do some conversion in your head. So in the early afternoon, we've got Lisa, Lisa and Stacy on Tuesdays. You've got me in the evening at 8.35, 8.30 p.m. And then on Wednesdays at 4 p.m., you have Brent, uh, Brent and Joe. And then on Wednesdays at 8.35 p.m., you have Winston. So there's going to be now, all of you are going to be a part of my specific class. I'm not going to be grading all of your work. There's going to be some of you here that I work with. There's going to be some of you here that Lisa works with, Brent and Joe, and then Winston. So if you want to attend my live classes, that's completely cool. If you want to check me out, maybe I'm not your vibe, you can go check out someone else's and see if they're more your, um, your jive or how you kind of learn, right? So it, you can pick and choose what, what, what works best for your schedule, or you can pick and choose based on who you like hanging out with. So Tiana, you don't have to join both classes. You can just pick the one you want. Or if you can't, let's say you can't make it to Tuesday or Wednesday. You're just busy on both of those days in the middle of the day, in the evening. There's no way you can make time. If that's the case, not a problem. We will have recordings available. In fact, I'm making a recording right now. Hello, everybody in the future. So if you can't make it, you can watch the recording. Or if you can, and maybe you make it for the Tuesday evening session, Tiana. So you're here with me right now. Let's say next week, it doesn't work out that you're able to come to my live class. And so you go to the one at 
12 p.m., that one at noon, or you wait until Wednesday, you go to the one at 4 p.m. So whichever works for you, we understand that you guys are still kind of figuring out where LA Film School is going to fit into your life. There's a little bit of time management that you have to kind of do a little bit here. So figure that out on a weekly basis if you feel like it. Um, or if you're consistent enough and your schedule is consistent, and you like um, you want to show up at 8.35 p.m. on a Tuesday every single time, that works completely well for me. We just want to build in as much flexibility as possible into the live classes because we know you guys can get busy in your daily lives. We understand that life can happen indeed. And yes, Noah, so for any given week, all of these sessions are going to be covering the exact same topic. So it's not like you're going to hear about week three or week two in week one. That's not going to happen at all. So this is all week one. And then next week, when the schedule rolls over again, it'll be the next week's topics. So that's a great question, Noah. Now, here's some room, uh, rules for the Zoom live class. These are very basic rules. I don't think I'll have to reiterate these too much, but the first one is quiet on the set. For the runtime of the live class, I'm going to be the only one speaking. I'm going to be the only one you guys can hear, simply because if you guys were all unmuted, we would hear television shows. We'd hear somebody playing Elden Ring in the background. We'd hear dogs barking, kids talking. You're talking to your spouse if you want to. Maybe somebody's eating. We don't want to hear all that. And we also don't want you guys to feel like you have to kind of censor yourself in your own home because you're mic'd up and everybody can hear what you're doing. So I'm going to be the only one speaking. You're going to only hear me. But if you have a question at the very end, and it might be a paragraph typing, but speaking it out loud only takes a couple of seconds, I can unmute you at that point and we can have a dialogue about what you need. So don't worry too much about that. Uh, collaborate and listen. You guys are amazing in chat right now. So you guys just contributing and asking questions and greeting each other. Continue doing that throughout the four weeks. I have an eye on chat pretty much the entire time. So if there's any questions, I'm going to be on it very quickly. But again, if I don't answer your question right away, it does not mean I'm ignoring you. And the last one, wear a shirt, please, if you're going to be on camera. So Meryl's got his lizard on his shoulder, or he still does have the lizard on his shoulder. So if you want to hang out with your pets on camera, cool. No worries about that. What you can't do is not wear a shirt on camera. Please don't do that because we've had students do it before. But they just walk by topless. It's always dudes for some reason just walking topless across the camera. And I have to be like, please put on a shirt. You're being very distracting. Luckily, this hasn't happened since we started doing this in 2020. Those early days were the Wild West. People would just show up on camera wearing anything. And we want you guys to be comfortable, but we also want everybody else to be comfortable too. <laughs> so um, just be mindful of that. Wear a shirt. Be comfortable in your own home uh, if you're going to be on camera, of course. But just don't be too comfortable so to speak. So Gerald is asking, is this class for both audio and music production? Gerald, this is a general education liberal arts class where everybody takes it. So animation, film, music production, entertainment, business, media communications, and so on. Everybody takes this class. Everybody takes the same month two class. And in month three, that's where you guys all splinter off to your specific degree programs. So you're going to be hanging out with the same people for about two months, and then you'll all split away. All right, so the first thing we're going to cover is the start here class module, and that looks like this on the class page. So I want to make sure that you guys see this for yourselves. So this is where everything that you want to access for this first week, but none of these are graded. So don't feel like you have to hit these on a specific deadline, but we do want you to look at all of this and interface with all of this for the week one um, period. And I'm only going to go over two of the assignments here, the course syllabus and Microsoft Office. So Taylor, I want to make sure that this is very clear. None of the live classes are mandatory. You're not, you don't have to be here technically, but we do have a graded component that is linked to the live class. So if you're not here and you don't answer that, you will lose a portion of your final grade that adds up to about 8% of your entire grade. So if you're not able to make it to the live class, the recordings will be available, but make sure you view the recording and you answer the response question that I'm going to talk about near the end of the class. That's how you get credit for attendance for the live class. So don't feel like you have to be beholden to being here if it will affect your life schedule. Like if you've got work and you got to race home to get to the live class and that could put you in danger or something like that. There's like there's a lot of stressors that come with having to be somewhere at a specific time when you have previous obligations, right? So none of these are mandatory. You attend them as you can, but make sure that you watch the recording to get caught up and that you answer the live class question that I'm going to be showing you guys at the near, near the end of the class. So hopefully that answers your question, Taylor. And if there are any lingering doubts about live classes, hopefully that answers those too. 
You got it. Absolutely. Okay, so these are the first couple of things that you guys want to go through. These are ungraded, but I'm going to show you guys two in two specific ones. So the greeting started here. You want to begin your digital literacy journey at the start here and ready on the set modules. And the course syllabus, now that I'm caught up on my slides, this is going to give you a map of how the class progresses. And that's what this looks like right here. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but uh, what I want to show you is this right here so that you guys have an understanding of how you get graded for your assignments. Right now, everybody in this class that's with me right now has a zero for the live, for the entire class. That's your grade as it stands right now. And that's for two reasons. You ever turned anything in? Yeah, you might have turned some things in, but you haven't also given been given feedback or graded or any grades. So there's two components to receiving credit in the class, turning in your work and getting feedback from your instructors about the work that you did do. So if you did a great job, we'll make sure that you understand that. If you have some room for improvement, we will highlight those and make sure that you have that coaching for the next time. And if things aren't looking good, we can reach out to you um, and figure out a plan to make sure that you do have that improvement level that you want to see for the following week. But this is how each week breaks down. You have 25%, 25 points that you can earn for each of the four weeks. So you've got week one, this is 25, 50, 75, and 100. So as you turn work in, you turn in your, your answer to the first assignment here, you get 100 on that, you get 2%. You do the same thing for the middle assignments here, you get a total of 12. And then with this extra 13, you get a total of 25. And this is how your grade is calculated. It's additive. You start at zero, you can earn a total of 25 points here, total of 50, 75, and 100. So if you're ever wondering about where my grade stands, the closer you are to 25 points by the end of week two, that lets you know that you're doing pretty well on the course. That's close to 100. If you're like at a 49.5 for week three, that means that you have basically a 99 at that point. And again, and again, you can see here at the last week, that's when your grade kind of goes to its final total. So, oh, I earned 85 of the 100 points that I could have earned for the class, or I earned 100 out of 100 points for the end of the class, right? So just keep that in mind is that you will feel like you're failing for the first couple of weeks. You're like, why don't I have 36 in the class? I have hundreds on everything. Well, you've only completed 35% of the 100% of the assignments that we give to you in the class. So just keep that in mind, 25, 50, 75, 100. And if you just do the math on that, the closer you are to that cap for the week, the better you're doing in the class. And I'm gonna go ahead and move away here. And the next thing that I wanna show you guys is Microsoft Office. So this is available to all LA film students. So you can go to this activity, this one right here, Microsoft Office 365 Suite within the Start Here module. So if I go back, you'll see Start Here. You've got these four activities and the last one's one that you wanna to go to. And if you scroll through, you will see a link for office.com that I have open right here. And this is where you can access the online versions of Outlook, Teams, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. Or if you're on a computer, you can install all of these and be good to go that way. So all you have to do is click this guy right here. You're going to get a PKG file if you're on a Mac. But if you're on a PC, you get an EXE file. You'll click this right here, and then you will be off to the races with installing it on your computer. So we will ask you guys to be using PowerPoint and Word in the following weeks for your submissions. And yes, Evan, it is completely free. You guys have earned it because you are here at the Los Angeles Film School. So we want you to have all of this available from the, the first day. In this case, the second day, yes. So just go into office.com and what you need to do to be able to access this is you want to log in with your student email and password. So the exact same student email and password you logged into the class with, you will need to do that on office.com so that you can, again, click this button right here and download all of your apps. And this is all of your apps, not just Microsoft Office, not just PowerPoint, has everything here. And if for some reason you're on the go or you're on a mobile device and you're kind of working just to kind of be out and about and working, you can click one of these here and go to Microsoft Office and start using Office as if you were like had it on your computer. So it's very easy to set up, but if for some reason you want to use the online version, you can as well, and you can export your document to a download so that you can download your document and then upload it to the class page. So again, one more time, click this install office button after you log in with your student email and password. Okay, 
Let's move on here, the dashboard. Okay, so the LMS dashboard is where you can review your outstanding assignments, feedback from your instructor and class announcements. I won't be showing you my dashboard because it's a bit different since I'm faculty, but this is what you guys see right here. So you can click here at the very top to view past current and upcoming classes. So this Los Angeles Film School logo, you can click this to view all of your classes in general instead of the one you're inside of. You can see your current grade here. The circle will be solid when it's your final grade. So you will see this slowly grow. And this is where I, um, I mentioned that your points will be um, all told. So for the end of week one, if you've done everything great, you've got 100, you have a 25 here, that will be bumped up to a 50 if you do the same thing the following week, 75, 100 if you do everything in the course um, as you're supposed to, and it's all excellent work. You can expect to have a final grade that looks like this. You can see your instructor's available hours. So check here to know if your instructor is available for a phone call or for texting. Like since mine's 3 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. EST, there's a six hour window where you have immediately uh, immediate response from me. If you send me an email or you send me a text, you give me a call, right? And this is gonna vary by day and instructor. So just check up here um, for your specific instructor if you're not working with me, and this will show you their availability. You can also see here that if you have any new feedback, if there's any assignments that are late that you need to take care of, if there's anything not yet completed that's not let yet late, but you haven't started that assignment yet, that will be available here. And if there's any new announcements from your instructors, if there's something that we need everybody to know about all at once, you will see those right here. And then if you want to message your instructor or, or view the messages that you have received from your instructor, you can click this button right here. Your classmates are right here. And course content is going to be right here at the very top. And that's going to be essentially what you want to interface every time you log into the class. Just check your dashboard. Okay, I have to work on this. This isn't yet late. I've turned in this. I've got some feedback here. Oh, I have a new message from my instructor. Let me see what they wanted. Right? So all of that is available here. This is generally what you'll want to look at and review every single day you log into the class. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the week one class module and some things you want to keep in mind for your graded activities, because everything that I just showed you, you're not receiving a grade for completing those, but for everything I'm showing you after the fact, you will be seeing, receiving a grade for that. And I want to make sure that you guys have all the information you need to understand when things are turned in, how much they're weighed, and what you need to accomplish, and where you need to submit that information, right? So Ready on the Set module contains four grade-weighted activities. And again, if I go back here to the Start module, you can see under Content, We've got start here, which is where I showed you everything with the syllabus at Microsoft Office. And the one you want to concern yourself with here is ready on the set, week one. We'll click this. And these are your graded activities for the week. And you can tell here it says 2%, 5%, 5%, and 13%. Just like I showed you in the syllabus, that gives you your first indication that you got to take this seriously, right? So the next thing I want to show you guys here is your grade weights. And grade weights determine how much an activity is worth in percentage points. And each activity has a due date visible just below the activity title. So I'm going to show you both of these things at the same time because they are very close together. So if I go to the 1.1 activity here and I zoom in, so we have 1.1 live class question rec recording in question due Monday, September 5th at 2.59 a.m. And it's a 2% weighted assignment. Okay, so this is when it's due. And this is how much it's worth of your final grade, right? So you might see something a little bit unusual here. Monday, September 5th at 2.59 a.m. Who's going to be up for that hour? Like, that's really, really late, right? However, this is also 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. I have my um, due dates in the web on the East Coast because I live in Florida. However, the employer that I work for, Los Angeles Film School, is on the Pacific Coast. So they're three hours behind me, right? I have mine set to my time zone setting just to make it a little bit easier for me to understand when things are due. You guys can change this too, and I will... I will um, make sure that you guys understand how to change this as well. Did I misspeak, Meryl? Sorry about that. But yes, I will make sure that you guys have an understanding of how to change this for your specific locality. So that's one less thing you have to worry about. And one thing that I notice students kind of latch onto is the day. They're like, oh, it's due on Monday. No worries. I'll just turn it in at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. on Monday, right? And students don't realize that the due date was at 3 a.m. So if you're turning their work, at six in the morning on a Monday, what do you think is gonna happen? It's gonna be considered late. So unless you're up at two in the morning, Eastern, Eastern Standard Time, and you're working on your work, you can submit that and it won't be late. But if it creeps over to 3 a.m., 
you're going to run into a problem. So please keep that in mind that don't just stop here. Oh, it's due Monday, September 5th. Keep in mind the date here, the, the time as well. So this can sneak away from you if you're not careful about reading the entire thing here. And I can show you how to change that in just a little bit. I'm going to go over all that um, as well. Okay, so due dates and times, we talked about that. Grade weights, which is going to be on the right-hand side of this. So you have the due date here and the weight over here. And each of your graded activities is a certain grade weight visible next to the due date. Always consider that as well. So we see 2% here. This one is 5%. Your discussion is also 5%. And your project for this week is 13% for that total of 25 points that you can earn for the week, right? And rubrics are in, are how we assess you as, as your instructor. So you can use each activity's rubrics as a checklist to help you maximize your score. And I'm gonna show you what the rubric look like, looks like basically or just briefly. And this is the rubric for your discussion, for example. So what we mean by using this as a checklist. So, well, as you're working on your discussion post, you can view the advanced column here where it says, for relevance, content is highly related to the discussion topic, addresses all prompts and questions. So if you're in the middle of answering the questions for your, your, um, your discussion post, and you read this here, you can go back to your answers and say, okay, is this highly related to the topic? Is there any way that I can add a little bit of extra detail? Is there research that I can add to this to make sure that it's as comprehensive as possible? And that goes into thoroughness and clarity. Opinions and ideas are expressed clearly. So are there any spelling errors or mistakes? Did I um, make a mistake in my research? Is there something that I can include to make this even more detailed and to better support my points? And that's something, again, you can use as a checklist. And then same for contributing to the learning community. Did I respond to at least one of my classmates? Okay, if I did that, was it a thorough response where they could really dive into it and we could have a conversation? Was it a single word? Was it a single sentence? Then you're probably gonna follow fall in this below standard or basic column. But if you got two or three sentences, you'll probably be in the advanced column. But if you got a nice paragraph, five to seven sentences for your response to one of your classmates, you can rest assured that you're probably gonna fall in this advanced column here, right? And then writing mechanics. Did you run spell check? Are there any grammar mistakes? Are there any careless errors that you included in your response or your initial post? Well, maybe you wanna copy and paste your post and run it through spell check on Microsoft Word. Make sure that you correct all the errors and then paste it back into uh, your discussion so that you can, again, receive the maximum points possible for each of these four categories. So you always want to follow in the events column. And we're not shy about showing you you need to do this, 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 and this. This needs to be included and how much it's worth. And these are how we base your feedback. So you will see in your feedback all four of these categories in addition to specific things that we noticed in your submission. Hey, we noticed that you under you you under case your I when you're referring to yourself and that needs to be capitalized or uppercased. I noticed it throughout your slide, your, throughout your message here. I only counted it off once because I noticed that this was an error that probably is very easy to correct. So I'm not going to deem you for a lot of points, but I did notice this. Make sure that you correct it for your future, um, future discussion posts. And if we see it again, we will again mention it again. But uh, generally, I've noticed that we when we coach you guys, one time is generally enough because you can go back and view the feedback for the previous week to make sure that you're on track for that the current week. So just keep that in mind, it is available to you for each of these activities. Some of the rubrics, as you'll see, are very, very simple. And the more involved the project is, the more involved the rubric generally is. So for something that's 2%, you'll see one category. 5% has two categories. This one for the discussion, all four of your discussions have four categories, so that's a bit of an outlier. And then your projects generally have four categories, but since we're week one and we're asking you just to do a couple of things, you can see that the rubric here is just two categories. It's not a big, really big deal, right? So let's go back up to the very top for each one of these. Go back to our slides here. And here's something that's also important for you guys to know, late work policy. So students will have up to three days or 72 hours from the due date to submit the assignment without penalty if an exception is provided. So let's say you turn in your work on Monday but you had to go to the hospital the previous night or over the weekend, something you could not control. There's nothing you could do about it. Or let's say your power goes out over the weekend or um, you have an internet go down over the weekend. I know we've had several students dealing with natural disasters where their power is out. How are they supposed to complete their work? 
well, if we know about it and you guys reach out to us because generally phones still work in disasters for the most part, just let us know, stay in communication with your instructor and we can work with you to provide um, some leniency if you happen to turn in your work late, but it's due to things that were outside of your control, right? So just reach out to us, say, hey, Justin, hey, Lisa, I, I know that this is due on Sunday, but I think I'm going to be out of town for a family event that is going to take up all my time. Is there any way that I can get an extension? Is there any way that I can turn in my work and not get it submitted late? And we will make a decision. Sometimes we'll say yes, sometimes we'll say no. But if it's for a hospital visit, you're traveling out of town for work, you're traveling out of town for family, it's something that you have to do. You have an obligation to somebody. We're not gonna count you late for that. But if we don't hear from you at all and you do have an issue, we're just gonna assume that you didn't turn it in on time and the late penalty will then apply. So it will be a 10 point deduction if you turn in your work on that in that 40, the 72 hour window. So you turn it on Monday, just 10 points. Tuesday, just 10 points. Wednesday, just 10 points. That's only that, that's all we're gonna take from you. However, if you turn in your work on Thursday morning, you don't get any points for that assignment at all. We can't help you at that point. So we can offer extensions up to 72 hours beyond the due date, the Sunday night due date. But if you turn in your work after that on Thursday morning, even if it's the crack of dawn, we cannot accept it. It will be considered late. So please keep that in mind. The late work policy policy is got a nice generous window, but after that window closes, you don't get any points at all. Now let's talk a little bit about the student portal before we go over each one of the activities for this week that you'll be graded upon. All righty. So this is the student portal, and this is connect.lafilm.edu. I'm going to go ahead and link this in chat so you guys have access to that. And this is essentially your one-stop shop for everything that you need concerning the Los Angeles Film School. You can access your classes, you can access the library, your clubs that you can get attend. Um, there's all sorts of professional resources that are above and beyond what you're gonna be learning in your classes. So this allows you to really dive deep into your education and get the most out of your experience here with us. So let's go over just a couple of things here. And I've got some tabs open you, can get, you guys can see here. I'm gonna be going over each one of those and I'm also gonna show you a couple of things that you want to know for your future um, for your future classes and for our our class as well so this bookmark section over here is going to be super important um, this is going to show you where you can log into all your classes so you can click here and then go to digital literacy you can check your student email with this one here and i'm going to pause to click this to show you what happens so if i click the student email button where it goes to uh, google mail you're gonna guys are going to see my personal account you guys can see that i'm a nintendo fan i bought something from nintendo what is this this was Fire Emblem. I bought a couple of weeks ago. Like, so you can see my personal email here. So you're gonna click this button on the student portal here and be like, why am I in my personal account? What's going on here? So what you need to do is that you have to manually log into your email account, your student email account with this button up here. So you can see here, you can see my email accounts here, my personal email account, my LA Film email account, and then clear, I can click to add another account. And this is where you'll enter your student email, and this is where you're gonna enter in your password, and then and only then it will show you all of your student email. And in fact, the project for this week, the 1.4 project has you guys take a screenshot of your email so that we, got, we know you guys um, have access to it and that you're able to use it, right? Oh no, Drew, you're gonna dox me? I better get out of here then. <laughs> so you just move, make sure that you guys understand that when you click this button here, it's probably gonna take you directly to your, your, your personal account. You have to manually log in to your student account by clicking this button in the top right. So I'm gonna do this again at the risk of Drew's draft, wrath. I'm gonna come up here, click this, and then I can add a brand new account here. And this is where you're gonna enter in your student account and then your password, right? So let's go ahead and move on, close this guy right here. And you can also see the student portal. You don't need to worry about that. You can see your class schedule here. Um, generally, this is gonna be a monthly sort of thing. And if you're on campus at any point, well, that, I don't think anybody in here would be on campus, but that's where you can also check the class schedule there. Student advising or student success is gonna be for anything that doesn't involve me as your instructor or your instructor in general. And then there's all sorts of other ones over here that you can click on, but there's one I wanted to bring to your attention, guys that might be helpful for some of you. You can update your preferred name. So if the name that you have on the, the student portal 
is it the name that you go by or is another name that you prefer to go by you can click this button right here and it will ask you to log in with your username and password so your student email and password and you can change your name to whatever you want it to be and there is approval process for it i think you can only do it once or twice so keep that in mind you can change your given name on the lms and that is the very bottom link on the bookmarks tab over here on the left hand side all right so the next thing i'm going to show you guys is the student success page I'm also going to link this in chat. Here we go. So this is, again, where you want to go if you have any questions about something happening in your world that your instructors cannot help you with. This could be life issues. It could be um, financials type stuff. I don't want to go into it. But if you have any questions about, oh, hey, maybe I should let my instructor know about this. If it's something we can't help you with, we will point you in the right direction of the person who can help you. And generally, it's going to be student success because they're going to have the ability to talk to you about things that your instructors legally cannot talk to you about. So please keep that in mind. We're not shrugging you off. We're not trying to uh, send you somewhere else because you're bothering us. There are things as your instructor that we legally cannot discuss with you, our students. And these are the people that you can discuss that with, student success. And we will point you in the right direction. We have access to all of your advisors. We know who they are, and we can point you to say this person or this person, instead of just a general email where it kind of goes to everybody, we can make sure that you get the exact support that you need, right? Next, what I'm gonna show you guys here is the library. And we are doing research in week two, but we do not require you guys to use the library, but this is an excellent resource for you guys to have. If there are any questions about subjects um, that you're not going to, that you're going to be taught later on, you can start getting a preview of what they're all about. Um, you can ask a librarian for any resources. So if like, let's say you're looking for Pro Tools tutorials or graphic design tutorials or Logic Pro tutorials, your instructor, you can ask your librarian here and they'll point you into the direction of where those resources are within the library page. And they're probably collated and have a huge set of links that you can just click on and use and uh, not worry too much about the particulars. They just give you all the resources that you can start learning, right? So that's what I wanted to show you guys. I also wanted to show you LinkedIn Learning, which is amazing. So you guys probably have heard of LinkedIn, but you might not have heard of the actual um, professional resources that they have here, where you can go in here, watch these videos, and not receive um, class credit, but you can receive certificates that say, hey, I su successfully completed this live class, or rather this, this LinkedIn learning curriculum. Uh, and that can be something that you can kind of have in um, your tool set. So it happens to win, help win every day, developing your professional image in a new job, prioritizing your tasks. This might be a good one for you guys to take. If you're brand new to online learning and you're kind of learn, like figuring out the ropes, maybe you wanna go over here and like, hey, I wanna learn a little bit about prioritizing my tasks. All you gotta do is just sit here, listen to this guy, uh, go through each of these at your own pace. It's not like you can sit here for an entire hour and listen to them. You can pick out the ones that work best for you, go and fill the gaps afterwards. You can learn in any order that you see fit. And there's a chapter quiz if you want to kind of test your knowledge on whether or not you really retain all the knowledge or the concepts that are presented in the LinkedIn learning class. So this is supplemental. This isn't something where you have to, uh, where you're, it's mandatory that your class is going to make you go here to learn. This is completely supplemental and it can only help you reach uh, your full potential because it's going to teach you soft skills, whereas what you're going to be learning in your um, in your degree programs are hard skills like software, hardware, how to do X, Y, and Z. Whereas with soft skills, it's like how to manage people, how to manage your time, how to be more effective and so on. So you'll want a combination of both of those things to be a successful professional. Um, so I highly recommend using LinkedIn Learning in addition to the uh, education that you're gonna be receiving with us. You can also join clubs. So if you're into d and if you're in the fitness, if you're in the film, uh, if you've got military if background, if you're a veteran, if you're into music, photography, uh, screenwriting, social media, there's all sorts of clubs here. And you can also 
sit in a petition for a particular club if you don't see something you like. So if there's an FGC club that you might, maybe Meryl wants to start, you can have a charter form here. And if you can get an instructor on board, that can be something that you got you engage with that's outside of the realm of your class experience, but you're hanging out with your classmates and your instructors in a way that's constructive and interesting, right? So Kenny, if you think you can start an LAFS esports team, I'd be surprised if we don't already have one, but hey, this is where you can submit the, the uh, petition for, maybe that's something that you can um, get started. And the DMD club is actually run by my coworker, Stacy. So if you guys are working with Stacy, she runs the DMD club. So that's something that you can also be a part of. If you wanna hang out with her and be more involved, that's what you can do. And Abigail, if you wanna join, there are invite links where you can access club specific channels and that will allow you to join. So you'll click this link over here on the right-hand side. Or you can click the link over on the left for the particular, so let's go for fitness and wellness. Okay, so those are just the emails. So yeah, you'll click this Discord link over here to get an invite. The next thing I wanted to show you guys is the distribution center. And I know I'm going through these fairly quickly, but we are running out of time. I want to make sure that we have time for everything. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show you guys, and this is going to be really important for you to, to pay attention to, is where you can find information about your tech kits. So your tech kit is going to be essentially the computer and the hardware and all the extra bits and bobs that we're going to be sending you in the mail so that you have a nice, fancy computer to, to work with uh, for your degree program, right? So all of your degree programs are listed here at the bottom. So if you guys click that link, and you scroll down where it says tech kits and online programs down the right hand side here you can see all the different degree programs so i want you guys to list your degree program in chat and i will pick the first one that i see and go over it all right three two one just throw your degree program in chat and i'll pick the first one i see i might do two and now graphic design and music production are the two that i saw Okay, so let's go over graphic design. We're gonna click this here and let's go over music production. And I'm gonna click this here. And if you wanna go over your own specific degree program, just click that link, I'll throw it in chat one more time. And then just scroll down to tech kits and then go to the right-hand side. And then you'll see this little tiny arrow, click that and you will see your tech kit, with, which is a packing list. So this is what you're gonna see if you're in graphic design. This is what you're gonna get in the mail along with your computer and all of your other things. So this is the first thing that you should see. Dear student, please use this packing list as a visual checklist to ensure you've received all the items designated for this program of study. You are responsible for reporting any missing or damaged items within three days of receipt. And I wanna show you a slide before I go any further. Where is it at? Right here. So your third month tech kits will be sent out during the third week of your second class. Now that sounds confusing. Let me break it down for you. In month two is where you're going to hear about your tech kit. Week three of month two is where your instructor is going to be at. You need to go check your email because you've received an email to help confirm your physical address, the address you live at right now. If you don't answer that email and confirm your address, you don't get a tech kit. So please be mindful of this. So month two, week three, your instructor is going to be like, go check your email, go check your email, go check your email, go check your email. They're going to remind you a bunch. You're going to check your student email. You're going to confirm your physical address where you live right now. And then that's when your tech kit will be sent out to you before your third month starts. So you have a week buffer period. We're going to get your computer to you wherever you are, right? So week three, month two, that's when this process starts, okay? So go to your email, confirm your physical address when you get that email. And then this is what you're going to see once you get your package in the mail. Okay, Ella, if you've changed your address, you're going to be able, you're going to be able to confirm that when you get that email. My address is now this. This is what you had on file. Please send it here instead, right? So that's what you're going to do. So once you get, if you're in graphic design, you fulfilled all the requirements, you have answered the email, we've sent the package to you, you're going to see this at the very top when you open the box. So you're, again, you're responsible for reporting any mess, missing or damaged items, any concerns or questions regarding this shipment, should be brought to this number 323-769-8769. And then this shipment includes the following components. So if you're in graphic design, this is all the stuff that you're getting. Count it once, count it twice, count it three times if you're unsure. So you're gonna get a MacBook Pro, an iPad, 
an iPad case, a ring light, a table mount, a USB-C to USB-A adapter. You're going to get a 4K HDMI USB-C um, hub. You're going to get a light stand, a magic mouse, an Apple pencil, and replacement nibs for your pencil up here, right? So this degree program used to offer a Wacom tablet. Right now they're offering you guys an iPad with an Apple Pencil. So these do change from time to time to make sure that they, we're giving you the best opportunity and the best experience possible. So Ella is asking, do we mail it back when we're done? No, Ella, once you get into the mail, that computer is yours. You own it, it is yours. So hopefully that assuages some of your worries. I'm pretty sure a couple of you had it, the questions about that. You're not sending this back. This belongs to you. So again, this is what you're going to get if you're in the graphic design program. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten items. So double count, triple count, whatever it takes to make sure that you have everything on this list. And if you don't see something here, call this number so that we can send that option, that thing to you. And Ella, don't worry. You're asking great questions that other people hardly have but you got to it first. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about that at all. Okay, so that's graphic design. Let's talk about music production. So again, same spiel at the top. Let us know if there's anything missing from this within three days of receipt. This is the number that you need to call in case there's anything missing. And here's what you receive in your package. So double check, triple check that all the items are here. MacBook Pro, 32 gigabyte iPad, iPad case, GBL 305Ps, an iLock for your computer, a Novation launch key, two terabyte hard drive, and Audio-Technica ATH40s. So this is pretty good, right? So this is what you're gonna be getting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items if you're in the music production program. But wait, there's more. So if you're in music production, you get these items up here, but you also get this stuff down here. You get a focus right, uh, mic cable, some extra cables here, another hub, pop filter, desktop stand, and Audio-Technica mic to match your headphones. So if you're in music production, you get eight, 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 items. You're gonna get a big box in the mail. So definitely triple check that everything is there, right? So Kenny, yes, all of this is packaged together. Tiana, you're getting one tech kit. So you're gonna get all of this in the same package. It's gonna be a big box that you're getting in the mail. You're gonna to wanna to track that package so that you're gonna be there on time, right? And Scott, if you want to check the tech kit for media communications, just scroll down here and click this website, uh, click this link, go to the distribution center, scroll down the tech kits, come down to the right hand side, open up media communications and click this link. Just for the sake of time, I want to make sure that we move on, but that is where you can find the tech kit for media communications. And apparently you guys get a lot of stuff in media communications, right? So let's move forward since we are running out of time. We've got like 20 minutes left. So let's reiterate everything that we covered here. So resources and support, this is where everything that you find on the, um, the student portal, you're going to find your class schedules, general school information, and your monthly tech kits. In addition to uh, student support, the library, clubs, you can change your given name, all of those things are available to you. You can access your email with this top link up here. It will log you probably into your, your, your personal email. You have to manually log into your student email the way I showed you a little bit earlier. And after accessing your student email account, email your instructor to let them know, just to, so just so we have a, an understanding that, okay, so-and-so has accessed their email, we know it, they know it, cool. And then knowledge base, we talked about that. Your month two tech kits and where you're gonna receive those. All right, so now let's talk about the activities that you're gonna be graded on for this week in our last 15 minutes together. And if there are any final questions after that, we're gonna, um, we're gonna settle down the recording. I'm gonna get that process and I'll answer any questions before we leave our session tonight. Okay, the 1.1 activity is gonna be the very first activity that you're going to work on. And it's fairly simple because all you have to do is reiterate some of the things that we talked about in this live class. And you're gonna have a question like this all four weeks of your class. And we try to start early um, with having you guys explore the LMS and in the, the student portal so that you know what your options are. And for this week, we also have a bookmarks assignment, which will help you um, kind of catalog the 10 most uh, visited places on the LMS. We kind of did our research and we found the 10 most visited. We're going to have you guys make bookmarks 
set it up in a folder so that it's easy to access all of that. You don't have to log in, go here and then go here and then maybe you forget where part of the, where one of your areas is. You don't have to worry about that with the bookmarks assignment, but if you want to answer this question to receive your 2% for the live class 1.1 activity. And the question is, uh, we want you to identify three topics or sources from the connect.lafilm.edu student portal and explain why those sources are helpful to you as an online student. So some of these I've already talked about, but if you find anything brand new that you want to talk about on the student portal, you absolutely can. And Christopher, week two will unlock on Saturday. And Aaron, if you've already completed this assignment, this is going to be brand. This is going to be a review for you. But this is for anyone that does has not completed this assignment yet. Um, if you haven't answered this question yet, it's not late. You'll be turning it on, on Sunday. But if you've answered it already, or you want to answer the question right now while all this material is fresh, you certainly can. An angel, I wish, because I want some of that novel money. <laughs> but unfortunately, I am not. And yes, Noah, it can be anything that we talked about on the student portal that you found helpful. And you want to pick three things. So this could be the distribution center where you use some of your tech kits. It could be student success. And it could be the D, it could be the, the, the LAFS clubs. Like you're interested in the DD club. And that could be something you, you include in your answer, for example. Okay, 1.2 is the next activity, and this is going to be the bookmarks activity that I mentioned earlier, where I'm going to, we have a list of 10 bookmarks, we want you to access those and then bookmark them to your web browser of choice within a folder, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. 1.3 is going to be your first discussion where we guys kind of have you got do an icebreaker where you get to know each other by talking about yourselves. And then 1.4, we're going to have you guys set up your LMS profile and send us an e or and take a screenshot of your email account your student email account so that your instructor sees that you have access to everything that you need. All right, so that is everything that I have for you there. Let's go ahead and log out here. All right, so this is the 1.1 activity. And since we're recording the video right now, there's gonna there's nothing up here yet. But if you're in my class and you want access to the recording about an hour or two after the class has ended, it will be posted within the 1.1 uh, class activity here. And down here, scroll down, you'll see this banner complete for credit, and you'll see the question that you need to answer. And you'll answer it right here in this completion area, in the feedback area, and that's where I grade you. So, so definitely keep that in mind. Video at the top. Answer your question, the question is going to be right here. And then if you scroll down, completion, write a response, this is where you will answer the question for 1.1. And the question is, or rather the statement is, identify three topics or sources from the student portal and explain why those sources are helpful to you as an online student. And you want your answers to be three to four sentences. We don't have a minimum or maximum word count, but three to four sentences explaining some of the things that you found on the student portal will help you get your full 2%. And this is the rubric that we're using to assess you. Level of completion, class credit completed or not completed. Either you did it or you didn't. So make sure that you answer this in as complete detail as you can. That's one. Number two, this is your bookmarks assignment. And before I go any further, I want to ask you guys, do you guys know how to make a bookmark on a website? Does anybody not know how to do that? You, you're laughing, Drew, but I asked this question seriously. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. Or I just want to know if, there, if there's a single no, I'm going to be going over it. So do you guys know how to make a bookmark? Okay, so there's a couple of people that are like, could you go over it? Yes, I'm going to go over it just just so everybody has a complete understanding. Now there are very detailed instructions here that I'm not going to read through. I'm just going to go through the process so you see what it looks like. Okay, so what we want you to do is we want you to basically set up a folder that's labeled and then we want you to bookmark websites that we provide to you and then put them all in that folder and the final result will look like this. So you can see my LAFS folder up here. You can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten links in there. That's essentially what we're looking for you to do. And there's more than one way to bookmark a website. There's like five or six different ways, which is why I wanted to ask, because we show you one way to do it. So using your browser of choice, click on the first link. You're going to, let's say this is the first link that we want you to click on. It's going to log you in. It's going to give you an error, of course. It's going to throw an error. So let's get that logged in correctly. In fact, I might have to make a brand new one. And of course, it's going to take a sweet, merciful time loading up. Here we go. 
So this one's perfect, perfect, okay. And of course it loads over here as soon as I click away, right? So this is the book, the one that we want to bookmark. This is the website we want to bookmark. So here's the multiple ways you can bookmark a website. You can click this little star right here and that will add a bookmark. And let's say we want to put it on the bookmarks bar. Cool. You can also right click and add a page or a folder. And again, that will add the bookmark to your bookmarks bar. So you can see it's here twice. You can also go to bookmarks and bookmark this tab and we do it again. And you'll see, again, there's not a third one here, but it's just these two right here. So you can see that there's multiple ways to do it. So you can go to bookmarks, bookmark this tab. You can click this little star right here. You can right click and click here. And this is all using Google Chrome. If you're using Firefox, it's gonna be essentially the same. If you're using Microsoft Edge, it might look a little bit different, but generally if you're using a web browser, it's just a matter of clicking the little star icon, right clicking and adding that page. And what we also want you to do is to right click and add a folder as well and name that folder LAFS. So we can see our folder here, it's empty. And if we want to say drag these into that folder, it's just a matter of boom, clicking, dragging and dropping. And we can now see that our LAFS folder that was empty before now has two links in it. That's essentially what you guys are gonna be doing for this assignment. You're gonna be bookmarking links that we provide and then you're gonna be organizing them into a folder and that end result is going to look like this where they're all in one folder. Does that make sense? Is that clear to everybody? Okay, cool. So let's go back to our assignment here. Okay, so you can see here in the instructions, if I went a little quickly, um, you can watch the recording, but you can also see here that it goes the long way where you click the button, bookmark this tab, you change the name of it, you put it in a folder and you click okay, and you can do that process over and over and over again. So it's one of those things where you can also, Kenny included control D. So if you wanna bookmark a website with a hotkey, control D will also do it. So I showed you three or three ways, that's number four. If I told you four, it's number five, right? So there's so many different ways to bookmark. We had to choose one. Now, Degout is asking, do we have to download Google Chrome? You don't have to, it's recommended just because it will be easier to follow these instructions. But if you're using Firefox or another web browser, it's generally gonna be the same way. You just right click on somewhere on the bar here and then you'll be able to add a page, add a bookmark. You might even see the little star icon up here as well. So it's gonna be a little bit different if you're not using Google Chrome, but it will work essentially the same. You can make a bookmark with any website or with any, any web browser, even mobile browsers. So just to kind of move through these instructions here, because what I showed you is essentially all you need to do very quickly, I'll do it one more time. You can add a page here. So this is how you can add a bookmark to the bookmarks bar. If you wanna make a new folder, add a folder, label it to whatever you want it to be. And then you can drag that into there. You can also hit command D or control D to add another bookmark and click done. You can also go up here, bookmark this tab. There's more than one way to do this. So pick the one that is most available to you, the one you're most used to, and that is how you can complete this assignment. Okay, so I also have a couple of links here. So if you guys run into any issues, how to bookmark a website on using a mobile device, and how to screenshot on almost any device because we are asking you to screenshot your bookmarks folder as well. So these are the links that we want you to, um, to bookmark. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go through each one of these. So click this one and this one and this one and this one, and this one, that's the total of five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay? So here's the entire process if you guys wanna work along. So I'm gonna make a brand new folder here. I'm gonna delete this one. Brand new folder. This is going to be called LAFS, and I'm going to bookmark each one of these pages. So Command D. I want to make sure that it goes in the LAFS folder, which is I'm going to relabel this one because I'm getting confused on which one's which. So EX, for example. So bookmark this one. So I'm going to bring it to the EX folder. Same for this website here. EX. Same for the help desk, EX, library, the exact same process. This is what exactly what you're gonna be doing, guys. Going here, clicking this one, one more. I know this is agonizing to watch. <laughs> boom, and this is the last one, boom. So once you've done that, your bookmarks folder should look something like this and then you'll be halfway done. So what do we need you to do after that? 
So after you've bookmarked all of these websites here and you've got your folder set up and it looks like this, we want you to take a screenshot of this folder right here. And there's multiple ways you can take your screenshot too. So some people take the screenshot of this little area right here and it looks like this. I wanna go ahead and scroll this over so you can see. So your screenshot submission would look something like this, which is completely cool. Or if your screenshot looks like this, if I go to Bookmarks Manager and I go to LEFS and it looks like this instead, that's completely okay too. So you don't have to isolate and just take a screenshot of these links here. If you wanna take a screenshot of the entire window, some students take a screenshot of their screen sometimes. We accept all of those for the week one activity. And Osmond is asking, how can screenshot while I bookmark using a laptop? It's gonna depend on your laptop, Osmond. If you're using a Mac, you can hit control. Um, I think it's Alt Control 4, Shift Control 4, you can take a screenshot that way. But if you're on a PC, you have to hit print screen or use the actual app, which I think is called Snip, Snippet, something like that. So it's going to depend on your actual computer setup. And that's why we have these links right here. How to screenshot on almost any device. So we, we, we don't know what kind of computer you have at home. So we just make sure that we do have a link here and it's gonna depend. Like when I take a screenshot with my computer, my PC, I hit print screen and then I bring it into Photoshop and do it that way. But that's not what you guys have access to. Um, but so we just want you to um, check this link. And if you're on a PC, it's Win Shift S. And if you're on a Mac, it's gonna be Control Shift or Command Shift 4. And that will allow you to take a screenshot and your screenshot will again, look like this or some variation where as long as we can see all 10 of these links here, you will receive credit for completing this activity. And this is what we're using to assess you. We're looking for all 10 bookmarks and we're looking for you to include that screenshot. So these both go together. So if you don't include the bookmarks, if you include a screenshot for some reason, you will probably not get 50% here. But if you bookmark all of your websites, but you don't provide a screenshot as evidence, you can't get any score at all. So definitely do both of these and your final product will again look like this. We have 10 links, you've got a folder and it's named LAFS. And if I make sure that it's as accurate as possible, it will look like this. This is what you will screenshot right here, boom. Okay, so let's move forward to the last couple of activities. That should go very, very quickly since we covered that complicated one. So we're gonna talk about your discussion, the, uh, the topics, then we're going to talk about your profile, what you need to do for that, and then we will be done for the evening. Okay, so your profile, or excuse me, jumping ahead of myself, your discussion has two components to it. And I want to make sure that you guys understand the two components, because it's going to be really important for how the dynamics of discussions happen each week, because there's two parts here, and one of them is time sensitive, and you need to get your post done by this point, so that you can respond by this time. So your initial post is going to be your answers to the prompts that we provide as your instructors and your replies are going to be to your classmates based on what they wrote for part one. So you're going to be responding to what they talked about in their answers to the question and someone's going to talk to you about how you responded to your answers to these prompts in part one. So these things go together. So your initial post is going to be due on Wednesday evening before Thursday morning. So 1159 p.m. Pacific time, Wednesday evening, that's when you need to have your initial post in the first part. Your second part, your response post can be, you can wait on that until Sunday evening, maybe Saturday evening. So you want to hit this hard deadline for your initial post or you'll lose 10 points if you don't submit it on the in the correct time frame. So if you make your discussion post, your initial post on Thursday morning, that will be 10 points off your final grade. But if you make it on Wednesday, you're completely good. So make sure that you complete your initial post on time and that you complete your reply post by Sunday night. So there are two different due dates for this activity. Just keep that in mind, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday. So this is what you guys are gonna be doing for your prompts for this week, they're fairly simple. We want you to introduce yourself to the class and tell us a little bit about who you are. We want you to tell, you, tell us about your degree program, what you're here for and what artist media project or event made you wanna pursue your specific degree. We also want you to tell us about some of your media interests. What kind of music do you like? What kind of video games do you like? What kind of te television shows do you like? Manga that you're reading? And then um, those are just the three bullet points that you want you, we want you to hit. And again, if your initial post is completed after the Wednesday night deadline, there will be a 10 point deduction to your final grade. So please keep in mind the Wednesday night due date. And then for your response post, make sure that you reply to at least one of your classmates with three to four sentences, maybe a paragraph kind of 
going over their answers and replying to them yourself so that you can create the basis for a conversation. But if you do reply to your, um, your instructor, make sure that you reply to also one of your classmates as well. We have lots of students who are respond to us and we love talking to you guys, but we can't give you a full grade for this component because you didn't respond to one of your classmates too. It's technically you're not completing the work all the way. You gotta rep reply to one of your classmates in addition to your instructor. So keep that in mind as well. So this is the rubric that we're using to assess you. We're looking for relevance. Did you answer the topics to stay on topic? Thoroughness and clarity. Were you clear and easy to understand and detail oriented with your answers? Contributing to the learning community. Did you respond to at least one of your classmates with a detailed response about a paragraph long? And then writing mechanics, did you run spell check? And this is what we're using to assess you to make sure that you get your full 5% for this activity. Now, there are some questions in, in the chat right now. So yes, this is gonna be due tomorrow. The first part of this is due tomorrow. The answers to your questions that are listed right here, these three bullet points, this is all due tomorrow evening. And then your reply posts are due Sunday night, right? So just keep that in mind that there is one, two due dates for your discussion posts. There is a due date that is on, again, Wednesday night at 11.59 p.m. Pacific. And then your second due date for your reply is on Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Pacific, right? And Osmond is asking, how can I bookmark using an Accept laptop? Um, you will definitely want to go to the 1.2 activity, Osmond, and look at how to bookmark her out and how to screenshot with any, any device, because I'm not sure what that computer is, and that's something that I can't help you with right away. So let's go over our last thing here that we have to cover, because we are over on time, and then I'll answer any other questions that I can before we part ways tonight. Okay, so this is the last thing. Thank you for bearing with me. I really appreciate you guys being here, all 52 of you. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of you here. This is the last thing we're going to cover before we part ways. Okay, so as you start your student journey, it's time to set up your student profile and get all this set up and ready to go. So you don't have to worry about this ever again. So you're gonna set up your student profile picture. And I'm gonna show you guys where to get that. So come up here to this icon. It's gonna have your initials. So if you're Angel Guzman, it'll be an AG up here if you haven't uploaded a profile picture. So you're gonna go hover over this button and go view profile. And this is going to send you to your profile and i'm actually going to open up a website because that makes it easier and now from here you can edit your profile so click this button to edit and this is what you're going to be completing for your 1.4 activity now let's go back to our instructions here so you're going to click account up here boom boom knock that out and then you're going to upload your photograph right here so i can't i'm not going to delete my photo so you can see what this looks like but it's going to be like a little camera icon and this is where you can drag and drop your photo of yourself and the couple, there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind you want to have a selfie style picture where we can see your full face if you want to wear a hat cool if you want to wear a hoodie cool what we don't want to see is like something where it's not clear if it's you no avatars no facebook or what is it, FaceTime, um, sort of like filters over your face so it obscures who you are, no low resolution images, just grab something from Facebook or Instagram or you take your smartphone and boom, take a selfie and that will be perfectly fine. It doesn't have to, you don't have to overthink it, right? And this is where you're going to upload your picture. And now one thing I wanna caution you guys on is when you upload your picture, it's not gonna be accepted right away. There's some poor soul in a cubicle somewhere that has to manually approve I think it's 240 profile pictures for our, our incumbent DGL students. So if you don't see yours approved here, there's like a little yellow gear, just keep in mind that there's somebody in a closet doing this, clicking approve or unapprove for almost 200 people. So Meryl, if yours got approved and it's not the correct um, type of image, um, you wanna be very mindful of, um, they might get rejected later on. I'm not sure what, um, why yours got approved. Um, I've, I can't see your profile picture right now, but just keep in mind that if you don't see it approved, there's a little gear here. Someone has to manually do that and it's not your instructor, it's somebody, we have no clue who it is, but they're in, they're just somewhere in a cubicle in a closet, just boom, 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 clicking buttons. So just keep it, keep that in mind. Uh, if it was custom drawn, if, I'm not sure why that got approved. It's supposed to be a photo of you, but if it got slipped through the cracks, I'm guessing somebody had a, a good day and they were just like, you know what, let them on through. Not sure why that happened. But that's generally what you want to keep in mind for your picture. Otherwise, it will generally speaking get rejected if you're not adhering to these rules right here. 
We probably liked your art. <laughs> so, okay, so that's done. So next thing is your profile information. So you can gather some of this information from your discussion. If you can put your discussion first, we're asking some similar questions. Uh, what are you passionate about? What are some of your interests? What are some of your biggest achievements? So if you talk about this in your discussion post, you can add it to your profile. And you can see here in our example that John Wick loves dogs. He travels to meet interesting people and he's dedicated to accomplishing his goals. You can see he's from the United States, New York, New York, and that is his profile. You can also review and add your contact information. So make sure that you review your phone number and email address to so make sure that they are, again, you know, the email and phone number that you have regular access to. And there are alternatives too. So if your main number doesn't work, you can have someone else's number here, maybe a, phone, a parent, loved one, something like that, where they can get a hold of you very quickly if you're not able to um, have access to your primary number or primary email address, right? You can also set the best time to call. And if I go back to my profile, you can see here, um, best time to call, morning, noon, afternoon, evening, and night. So if you have all these set, we know when to contact you. So if you're not available in the mornings, but you are in the afternoon, evening, and night, you probably won't hear from us until the evening or we're not going to call you in the morning or anything like that, right? And conversely, if your nights are all taken up and you're only available at noon, that's when we're going to contact you. So we're always keeping this in mind as we're working with you as an instructor. And next thing I want to show you guys is email settings and time zone. So we talked about this way, way earlier. Now we're going to hit it again. So there are email settings that are going to be in your profile that are defaulting to on. Please don't turn these off because um, it's going to be really important that you get all of these emails for varying degree, varying degrees of importance, but they're all going to be important. If you don't click this, you won't know when you've gotten a grade. If you don't click this, you won't know if there's an assignment change or a due date change, and that can be really important. If you unclick this, you're not going to get any responses from your instructors or our feedback. You'll have to manually go to your email address, see that there was some, or manually go to the class and see that there was something submitted instead of just getting an email notification. Same for announcements, same for discussion replies. Please don't do this. Bad, 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 bad. Please do this instead. Click all these on. Good, good, good. Please leave this alone. It will be really important for you to guys to have all of your emails. You're going to get a lot. Sometimes you might wear out that delete key, but it's important just to know what's happening in your world here at LA Film and just having all these notifications set up, even if it's stuff that you have to, you can ignore at this moment, there's going to be a critical email that rolls through and you'll be glad that you have these on. Last thing I'm going to show you guys is this time zone settings. So let's say you're in a different um, state. Let's say you're in central time, right? You will change it here to central time. And then if you go to an activity and I scroll up, you can see that the activity is still showing me Eastern Standard Time, right? But if I refresh the page here very quickly, you can see here that it's changed. It's 1.59 a.m. Central Time. So this will change wherever you are around the country, if you're in the United States or if you're around the world, it will change as well. So I had a student who was in Taiwan last month or the month before. So there was a 12 hour difference between when I would speak to her and when she was awake. So 8 p.m. or 8, 9 p.m. my time will be 9 a.m. her time. And she made it to all the live classes. But if you're in Beijing, China, you can refresh the page here after you set your time zone and it will, again, let you know when things are due. So so the middle of the day, three, almost 3 p.m. time in Beijing in the afternoon is 11.59 is p.m. Pacific time. So there's a bit of a gap there. I think it's like, how many hours is that? I don't want to do the math. You don't want to do the math either. And that's one way that you can avoid this altogether. So if you're on China Standard Time, 2.59 p.m., if you're in Baghdad for some reason and you're turning in your work, you can refresh the page here and then boom, you can see that 9.59 a.m. is going to be your time. But since I'm on the East Coast, I'm going to reset this again, refresh my page, and then you can see that this is due at 2.59 a.m. EDT. So that will be the very last thing that you handle for your profile. And if I go back here to our instructions, let's do a quick review. So you're going to upload your profile picture. Your profile picture will be manually approved. And in Meryl's case, sometimes your image can be something that you drew, but I wouldn't count on that. You want to fill out your profile information using these three bullet points. You want to make sure that you review and add your contact info. So if there's an alternative email address or phone number that we can reach you at, include those. You can also choose the best time to call morning, uh, afternoon, or morning, noon, afternoon, evening, and night 
if you want to change, uh, if you want that to be set as well. You also will make sure that all of your email settings are checked. All five of those are checked. And then you'll set your time zone setting at the very bottom of the screen to wherever you are local to, right? And we've got screenshots for all of this. So make sure that all these are checked and then check your time zone setting to wherever you are. And I don't know if you guys know about this, but I want to show it to you. The LMS has dark mode. You might see some, this looks completely different than what you might see. So what you want to do is you want to click your profile image up here on the right, and then click this first button right here. So you can go to light mode, dark mode, light mode, dark mode. You can run your own little techno club if you want to, right? So I have mine changed to dark mode. Make sure that you have yours changed to uh, light if you want this, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys see this. All right. So the last thing I want to show you guys again is a less bit of review. Step five, you want to access your student email account. So we talked about how to do that much earlier. You're going to click that button right there. You're going to go to LA film, connect that LA film at EDU. It's going to be the very second button on the bookmark side, on the bookmarks list on the left hand side. And you're going to click that, log into your student email account manually, and then submit two screenshots of your profile. So we can see the entire profile and then submit a screenshot of your email account. Now we're not looking at getting your business or anything like that. Your instructors are just going to see, okay, they have access to their email. Great. We know that they know where it is and then we'll score you accordingly, right? And then again, we have a link here, how to screenshot on almost any device. In case you guys have questions about how to do that, reach out to your instructor as well throughout, throughout the week. Um, and if you submit your work early, we can let you know that you submitted it correctly or incorrectly. If you have any questions about that, definitely reach out to us. And this is what we're using to assess you. All required profile elements, contact information, location, time zone, notification settings, best time to call, two profile, two profile screenshots, and one email screenshot were included in the assignments. So if you have all of this, you will earn 13% of your final grade for week one, and you will be good to go and set up for week two, and you'll be able to access your activities for week two this coming Saturday. So if you want to get an early start, we do allow you guys to do that. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys. If there's nothing else, please uh, have a wonderful evening. And those of you watching the recording, I really appreciate your time making it this far. We went over this time. Next week, we're probably going to go over two, but I want to make sure that you guys have all the information that you need so that you can succeed here at the LA Film School. Welcome, and I'm glad we're he you're here. So are there any final questions for me before we part ways tonight? If there are, please let me know. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and close down the recording and uh, just wait for you guys to let me know what you need.